there's nothing to say. I used to play the violin, and my fingers got too fat, they get stuck in the strings, they go bonk, and then I can't play anymore. This legendary violinist hasn't practiced in eight years, and you won't believe what he sounds like now. As a professional violinist, I want to see if almost a decade of not practicing will affect your skill on an instrument. I've seen many, many YouTubers talking about this guy, but none of them have seemed to talk about his before and after violin skills. So here we are today. What happens if you do not practice for a year, two years, five years, a decade? Do you know what this Is it even worth starting Will I ever be at the same level as I used to be? The answer to these questions is going to be at the end of this video, so please watch until the end. As always, like and subscribe. We are this close to 15,000 subscribers. Let's try and reach it by the end of the year. Today, we are investigating the famous case of a YouTuber called Nekukado Avocado. He gave up his path as a professional violinist to create his fame as a mukbang YouTuber. Now, when I first heard this word, I had no idea what it meant. It's only after I googled it that I discovered that it's this really weird obsession with food. Yeah. He essentially makes videos of himself eating absurd amounts of unhealthy food to get views. Before his fame on YouTube, Nikocado really wanted to become a professional violinist, even commenting on Hilary Hahn's videos. And to be frank with you guys, he plays very decently. Someone on Reddit actually found his LinkedIn profile, and apparently he's got a lot of experience in gigs, bands, orchestras, and even went to Juilliard. But I got a full ride scholarship to my school. Could you, could the you Juilliard shred? school? Have you known about it? I went to the Juilliard for two years. I don't know what that is. That's like the best music school in the world. I used to play violin. Now Professionally? Kind of, yes. Kind, you're that good. I, I was very good. I mean, nevertheless, this guy calls himself a professional violinist. He was even good enough to make his living teaching the violin. I worked at a restaurant. I was a server. I Home Depot? Home Depot. Yeah, that's one of many. Violin lessons. Um, lots of different things. Okay. I used to play at weddings. I think it's safe to say that he really wanted to push his violin skills to a point where he would become a professional performer. Or so one would think. Ever since he started pursuing his fame on YouTube, he seems to have completely abandoned his life as a musician. He started his eating channel seven years ago, so we can assume that it's probably at that time that he stopped practicing consistently. He had different goals, and being a professional violinist was no longer one of them. So let's take a look on how Nikocado used to sound like many, many years ago. Is that the Sibelius concerto? Right from the bat, I can tell that this guy plays fantastically in tune. He has a really good vibrato. You can see him shifting up and down the violin in high positions, which is something more intermediate players tend to do. His hand is very flexible when he does those shifts. They're very clean, very in tune. Even the quality of his sound is very, very bright. Could he play the Sibelius concerto? Maybe. Let's hear another clip. Excellent bow balance. He's very tasteful with his vibrato too. You'll see that he doesn't vibrate each note, which is a mistake a lot of beginners might do. To vibrate every single note, you can see that he's very selective of which notes to vibrate. This just shows to me that he's very attentive to bring out certain parts of the music even more uh, to make it a bit more enjoyable for the viewer's ears to listen to. Wow. That was a very powerful shift. He's traveling through the neck of the violin with such ease, just like a butter cutting through knife. Fantastic. Yeah, you can tell that when he's playing these fast notes, he's very relaxed in the right hand and the left hand. Very, very virtuosic. I mean, for professional violinists, this isn't difficult, but nevertheless, it, it does sound pretty cool. I also noticed his bow hold is really, really good bow hold. You can see that all of his joints are nice and round. His hand is very flexible uh, in order to create the rich sound that you're hearing. Without a good bow hold, a good sound is almost impossible to get. <laughs> Look at this comment. Just imagine some poor grandma finding this, then clicking on his profile in hopes of more violin covers. I mean, how bad can it be? Let's see. What the...
Before we listen to how he sounds like now, let's take a moment to understand something about muscle memory. When we refer to muscle memory, we refer to two things. Motor learning, which refers to the type of memory that involves mastering new movements and skills, like riding a bike or playing an instrument. These skills are stored in the brain, not the muscles. So once learned, these skills are usually retained for a long time, but they can become rusty without practice. And relearning them is typically faster than the initial learning itself. Then you have something called muscle conditioning, which is basically the result of you working out. If you stop working out, those six packs that you got will turn into a one pack. In both cases, regular practice is the key to maintaining that muscle memory. So knowing that, I'm really curious to see how he will sound like playing now. So it seems like from time to time, he does upload segments of himself playing different pieces, so let's take a listen. Meditation is something that professional violinists do all the time. He, he's visualizing the melody. You can see he's very passionate about it. The mental sanity of the patient is under question. Please consider transferring to the mental asylum. This kind of sounds like a sound check that I had in a nightmare a few nights ago. I was being chased by Teletubbies. Okay, so some of you might say, oh, he's shredding, he has no idea what he's doing. No, he knows exactly what he's doing. His rhythm is on point, his intonation is good. He might be scratching, but he's doing that on purpose. His bow hold is still perfect. He is so quick in his shifts, very accurate as well. He has excellent finger placement in those crazy chords that you hear him play. This sounds really, really cool. However, I can definitely see that he has a lot more tension. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. You can see that the shoulder of his right hand is a little bit more elevated, meaning there's a lot of tension in that area. You can also see that he's not moving his elbow fluidly, but he's kind of moving his arm, which is another sign of tension. Now look, I'm not sure if he's doing this on purpose or not. We'll definitely watch some more videos. <laughs> This is actually impressive, guys. Whoa! Man, those pits are really powerful. So the reason I'm so impressed of this is because he has such a resonant sound and such an agitated vibrato. I mean, the frequency of his vibrato is just sublime. Let me let me try and play this for you. I mean, if you're tossing your bow from that height and not scratching, that just means that you have extremely good dexterity uh, in your fingers to balance that weight of the bow. Now, the bow technique that he's doing right here is called staccato, and it's just so well balanced. When you're playing staccato, you want a really nice popping sound. And it takes a lot of control to not sound like this. And to not like really scratch into the sound. Even his sautier there is really, really good. Like it, it takes a lot of bow control to do this, folks. It sounds really, really good. So here there's another clip of him doing the same thing. Up bow. Oh wow, marvelous up bow staccatos. So what's really impressive here is the amount of control you need to build on your bow. So you have to do like mini motion circles with, with your hand in order to have such a precise staccato. Um, and it kind of looks something like this. It takes an incredible amount of finger independency to be able to do that. So, wow, that, I wonder if his violin ever feels violated. If we get to a thousand likes, I will personally write to him and ask him to give me a violin lesson. Oh, let's hear him play something very slow and tranquil. Wow. 
no jokes, this is probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard on the violin. Wow, the comments say he should have stuck to violin instead of doing mukbangs. He's actually really good. This feels like watching the last shreds of a man's sanity. The worst part is it's it's true. It's really incredible. If he came up with this melody, the dynamic he's playing right here is his piano, and it's just so gentle, so comforting, so caressing. It's it's just beautiful beyond words, friends. I mean, I mean, this whole video weirdly proves that once you've established yourself as a musician, you cannot unlearn the skill. Playing the violin, or any instrument for that matter, requires intricate mechanics of the hand. Every part of the hand contributes to the flexibility, strength, and fine motor control. When a violinist stops practicing for an extended period, there's different changes that happen in the hand uh, which affects the ability to play. For example, when you're playing, your fingers must move very swiftly and accurately on the fingerboard to produce specific notes. Now, this requires an extreme degree of flexibility in your joints and if you don't practice you will reduce your flexibility and your strength in these joints uh, making it harder to execute fast passages or intricate fingerings. Secondly you need a really good wrist posture when playing Without regular practice, the muscles and the tendons around the wrist and the hand can become less flexible, uh, affecting the ability to maintain the correct posture for extended periods. <laughs> I mean, even here, his intonation is amazing. His bow speed is perfect. He has extreme flexibility in his fingers to do those really complicated uh, chord progressions. Ah, oh, and his intonation is so lovely. I really know you want me to comment about his surroundings. I, I really do, but I'm not. I mean, this video looks like something extracted from the deep web. I'm talking about someone locked in a room without seeing daylight for 50 days, having McDonald's tossed at him. And you can definitely see that the mental sanity of this person is slowly deteriorating. If there's one thing that Nikocado Avocado has taught us is that if you haven't played for a long time, those skills can quickly be regained. You just have to restart with basic exercises to rebuild muscle strength, flexibility, coordination. Then you can start learning your favorite pieces again. Now, go practice.